It's Triforce Heroes, the game where Link has to turn into a cactus and run around in his jammy jams to save the princess from having to wear tights for the rest of her life. Could there possibly exist a nobler cause? Probably not, I don't know. The game begins in a cutesy picture book style that tells the tale of a fashion-obsessed land called Hytopia, whose beautiful, superficial princess Styla has been cursed by an evil witch who... Okay, seriously? This animation is so lazy, even I could do it. Look, bam, done. Basically the same thing. The jealous witch turns the princess into a xenomorph, she cries about it, the Pokemon Haunter appears and starts taunting her. It's all a very traumatizing experience for the poor girl, I'm sure. But it's totally fine, because we are here to save... the... Uh, what am I looking at? Triforce Heroes begins as all good fantasy games do, with its sideburn-savvy, green-clad protagonist reading a sign requesting the aid of one mighty hero. With sideburns, of course. And I mean, after a link between worlds, what was Link supposed to do? Start a family with Zelda? Live happily ever after? Nah. Not when fashion calls. Fashion calls. It's weird. Triforce Heroes almost feels like a Majora's Mask situation in that this is one of the rare occasions where Link wanders off into some foreign land that doesn't seem to make much sense. In the same way that Termina was somewhat dreamlike and weirdly similar to Hyrule, Hytopia 2 feels like some kind of place that shouldn't exist, but does. Because fashion. Fashion go. Unlike Termina, however, Hytopia is a puny little hamlet. But on the bright side, it has everything you could ever need. You've got a shop for all your weird cosplay kinks, a treasure chest game that robs you blind, and a Miiverse. Other than that, though, it's... well, yeah. Do you have pointy ears, truly epic sideburns, and side-parted hair? No, but I've got plenty of dated lingo, just like this game! Link is forced into meeting with the king and princess of Pytopia, and oh! the king is just glorious. Simply glorious. He goes by the name of Tuft, and is easily the best thing about this game. Just the fact alone that he can flood the entirety of Hyrule with his tears without flinching is impressive enough. But listen to that. Oh! Is that not the most beautiful oh! you've ever heard? If I could hope to ever oh! like that, Maybe I'd be king, too. <sighs> That's the dream. <laughs> Tuft is just one of many absurdly colorful characters, however. You've also got the bearded baron, who's obsessed with this statue for some reason. This hilarious Link poser, whose hair looks awfully familiar. Sir Combsley, who can't seem to stop flexing, which kind of creeps me out. Cool name, though. A clown, a little kid, generic man number two, some lady who keeps hitting on Link despite being way too old for him. And then there's, of course, this cat. That poor, poor creature. Now that we've met the entire cast, <coughs> let's get back to the story. That story in quotation marks because this story is incredibly thin. Link meets up with a sister of the evil witch who happens to be our gateway into the wonderful world of fashion. Fashion go. That means that every time you create a new costume, you get to listen to this. If that's not incentive to collect as many outfits as possible, I don't know what is. The most addictive and arguably best thing about this game is exactly that, the outfits. There's something weirdly satisfying about gathering all the materials to make some sort of wacky new costume to dress Link up in. I mean, look at this. It's Link in a cheerleader outfit with a ponytail and everything. Look how cute he is. <laughs> Even better than just looking hilarious, though, is that each one grants you a special ability or enhances certain items. Take the Rupee Regalia, for example. Not only do you get the most suave mustache in all of Hytopia, suck it, bearded baron, but it also increases the odds of you finding rupees. As for item-centric outfits, you've got costumes like the Kokiri clothes, which let you fire three arrows at once, and the Torrent robe that lets you make a bigger pillar of water. Fun times. But for every great costume, there are less useful ones.
and then there's unlocking the outfits. As you progress through each dungeon, you're awarded a material after each boss, either a common, an uncommon, or a rare. Since luck may or may not always be on your side and many outfits require these rare materials, you likely find yourself covering the same dungeon multiple times, and that's where the replay value comes in. Considering each time you take on a dungeon, it's often with the help of a new group of people, it kind of helps keep the experience fresh, keeps things from getting stale. It may be frustrating at times when you want to go to a specific level, but you end up having to play one you've already completed 100%, and when you finally finish that and get to go to your chosen level, they disconnect immediately! But given that each new encounter with a new group of people is almost always never the same, it stays fresh. The second best thing about this game would definitely have to be the music. It's pretty unfortunate that Triforce Heroes probably won't be played by too many because the music really is something special. Just listen to how fancy this is. How relaxing this is. and how adventurous this is. So good! Also, the level design. That's good too. There are eight worlds for you to explore in the cleverly named Drablands, all in predictable fashion. Forest area, water area, fire, etc. And for each world, there are four levels, all of which play quite differently and offer you different items to help you and your friends slash randos accomplish your goal of making it to the end and getting some sweet mats. That's another cool thing about this game. The items. Most of the time, there's at least one item different from the others, meaning the three of you will likely have various roles to play that keep things interesting. Everything from using the boomerang to yoink your friends over a ledge, hookshotting through a cage, lighting a torch, etc., is all incredibly intuitive and fun, given the familiar mechanics of past top-down Zeldas. But it's the new totem mechanic that really changes things up. There are three positions, the top, the middle, and the bottom. The top is the guy who does all the firing of the weapons, the bottom is the guy who controls which direction you guys flee, and the middle... well, they just kinda stand there. I actually like being the one in the middle. Lazy strats. While it can be super frustrating having to rely on others to control all three of you, especially considering you all share health, I seldom ever found myself dealing with complete idiots. It feels like the people who actually went out and bought this game are fairly savvy Zelda fans, and if they weren't up to the challenge, a few healthy emote spams were often more than enough to get them to stop leading the totem and let Toasty take control. <laughs> If you do ever find yourself overly frustrated with the incompetent fools you're forced to play with, however, rest assured, Nintendo has a solution. The Colosseum, where you can murder your fellow Lynx for rare materials. Just like Miyamoto intended. Back to the outfits, some of my favorite costumes are the ones that feature Lynx straight up cosplaying. And here's a list of said cosplays. Darunia! Look at that chiseled Goron bod with that flowing mane and stunning dad punch! Azura! I find this super adorable because it looks like one of them tried to eat Link, realized too late they were the same size, and... Now he just kinda has to deal with having Link use his body like some sort of fish mech. That's not weird, right? A cheetah! A freaking cheetah! This one is actually my favorite. First off, look how cute it is. Second off, look at me destroy in the Colosseum. I'm so fast! I'm like a cheetah god! I fell off a cliff. Tingle! A Power Ranger! Steve from Minecraft! I don't like Steve, or Minecraft that much, to be honest. <laughs> but listen to that sweet chip tune. <sighs> the Timeless Tunic, as they call it, lets you turn every song into 8-bit renditions, and it's really, really cool. Your teammates may hate you for wearing it, since it benefits no one but you, but screw them. I don't need you. I don't need any of you. I got doppels. Oh, okay, I, I, I changed my mind. Can I come back now? Guys? Guys? They're scary. And lastly, taking the level of absurdity one step further, Link can even cosplay as the Ice Climbers and a Hammer Bro. 
The Ice Climber Parka Power, being able to walk smoothly on ice isn't so hot, but the Hammer Bros suit lets you thrash enemies with the hammer. Like seriously, if the Hammer Bros were this OP, they'd have no problems with Mario. Look at this. Look at this. That's right. Chicken mate, Mario. <laughs> With cosplay out of the way, it's back into the game, and after a decently short amount of time, depending on the skill level and dedication of your party, Link and the rest of its handsome clones finish battling their way through the Trablands to face off one last time with the lady. And my god! She's huge! Kill it! Kill it with fire! Oh, you can't. Oh, she took away our items. Whamp. After slaughtering the lady in her fairy form, Link brings her clothes back to her sister who makes us the ultimate weapon. Well, Link's hot! <laughs> Link then uses his newfound powers to make the princess beautiful again, which brings great joy to the world of Hytopia, and the townsfolk celebrate by cheering as King Tuft and Sir Combsley totem the crap out of Link. Oh, that sounded, uh, hmm, oh. No one totems like King Tuft is toasty! <laughs> I, um, let me down. I shall assist! What? No, God, no, stop! Like, oh, okay, th this is happening. Great. And they all lived happily ever after. You're all terrible people. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please go ahead and leave it a like. You can also subscribe if you want to be notified whenever I release a new video. You can find me on Twitter and Facebook if that's your thing. I also want to hear from you guys. What was your favorite costume? It's the cheerleader one, right? It's of course the cheerleader one. It's cheerleader Link. Like, how, how, how can you beat that? I'll tell you by being a cheetah. If you wanna watch some more videos, I've got some floating around here and that about does it. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.